everyone welcome to an hour with lawico this is ramanuj mukherji from ipders and lawico.com and with me i have shatarupa choudhury who's actually a, a old friend of mine uh, who like from nujs and now she is working in dubai as a in house counsel and we'll ask her more about exactly what she does but today we are going to ask her a lot of questions about international arbitration and what sort of careers are available in international arbitration and especially in terms of in house counsels what kind of work they do around international arbitration what kind of career opportunities are available in dubai so definitely many of you will find this interest uh, interesting and relevant do ask your questions on the live chat uh, if you have any questions and let's welcome shatarupa welcome shatarupa Hi Ramanuj. Hi everyone. Thank you for getting me here to Law Seco. It's really a privilege and honor to be here with all of you. And I hope this uh, will be useful a session. And let's see. I mean, uh, yeah. How many of you are interested in international arbitration? And let me. I mean, just let me know whatever you want to know generally about it. and uh, to be frank enough like i've been into this uh, forum you know like uh, just 5 months back i'm quite a novice in this but uh, yes these 5 months have shown me quite a bit uh, about what uh, you know international arbitration is and uh, what practical issues any in house or any you know like even a law firm counsel is facing an international arbitration issue so um so yes that's it and and uh, uh, basically i i'm working with aditya birla and aditya birla as you know is a group company so we have like 30 to 40 businesses working uh, in i mean focused on different different fields like we have iron ore we have um steel we we produce uh, carbon we have a, a trade trading business in this essentially in dubai we have our trading business we trade in commodities which uh, you know that that leads us to interact with uh, different other jurisdictions different other parties and because we are getting engaged with other parties international parties we uh, we essentially always have an international uh, arbitration clause uh, naturally it's at, it's about uh, you know have finding a finding a neutral forum for dispute resolution and uh, most of uh, most of uh, the experience has been with ciac singapore uh, international arbitration center so i I'll, i'll get to that slowly and um so uh, yes i mean uh, my I- i'm sure like you know like uh, we are all here like law students we have law students here we have young young lawyer professionals here so uh, essentially tell you like i mean if you are interested in international arbitration the primary focus you must be um, having is on drafting good contracts so if you are good at drafting contracts or if you want to be thorough in international arbitration you want a career here you must be right now wherever you are just make sure you are giving ample time to contract drafting uh so because you are going to engage with the uh, international parties you will definitely have you know your governing law clause you will have your dispute resolution uh, clause so for that uh you have to be very sure like especially even if you're a law firm lawyer you are or an in-house counsel first of all when you're a law firm lawyer and you are you know like uh, helping your client in some matter whether it's at contract drafting or whether it's post default a breach and uh, you're taking it forward to an arbitration institution you must know what your client is looking for now uh, i I'll, i'll you know bring here a, a very important fact that um, there is that there is a difference between uh, uh, a law firm counsel and you know in house counsel so uh, essentially uh, you know as law firm counsels you you find yourself heavily engaged intensely engaged with procedures with the substantive law and everything that's that's 
one amazing bit to be in and also practically you get your experience in various forums now when you must understand one bit when you are an in house counsel you will also need to inculcate a bit of industry knowledge or a bit of commercial sense now uh, business people will always do business right they you know uh, they usually legal although it's 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 a precautionary um forum or you know like legal is always there to um help business not to get into trouble yet legal is seen as a hurdle because it it is it comes you know like on the way of business right so uh as a legal counsel you must understand that what your client is looking for and you know uh what do you can uh, wait with other point the midway to go ahead and put that whatever like governing law clause or uh, dispute resolution uh, you must you must take the inputs from your uh, business right Now, so basically you are saying that a, yeah. a, a in house counsel cannot just think like a lawyer but they also need to think like a absolutely look after the business. so we'll get into this detail a little bit more uh, In a, in a while, but can you uh, tell us a bit on like after NBS graduating, what brought you to this job? Because I think that will help people to relate to the answers you give a little better. Correct. Yeah. So uh, after like you know, two thousand twelve is I passed out of NBS. Though I got a couple of very good offers from Mumbai uh, law firms, but I I I did not have. to be very honest i was not very sure what i was interested in like there were a couple of things which interested me a lot like contracts like uh, space law like ipr so i was like okay fine so i came back to my hometown which is bhubneshwar and i started uh, getting into a lot of copyright um, matters so uh, i did that for a year that was highly interesting but then uh, i wanted some intense litigation uh episode to happen to me so then uh, other tebirla happened and we had a huge mining litigation going in delhi that time 2014 so uh 3 years i worked with um, you know mining and environment matters because it's a fact that you know in india we do not have many mining lawyers and mining is highly technical you need to not just know the law you need to know how it works you know how what government has in its mind how legislations are drafted so a lot of things were happening and it was a wonderful experience um in that i mean during that time i got to um i mean work under mr p chidambaram and um, gopal subramanian that was a brilliant event i mean i would you know term it as an event in my life and 3 years were amazing was amazing learning in new delhi now uh, because aditya bella has like lot of various of, of businesses so we have corporate legal okay corporate legal is at the center now corporate legal is an advisory uh, you know entity and it looks over all the businesses whenever businesses have issues they come to corporate legal and they seek your advice so it's 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 advisory now uh, uh we have a wonderful uh, you know general group group general counsel mr ashok gupta so uh he he believes in uh, you know like your work he believes in your dedication he doesn't believe in numbers or age like you know whether you are just like 4 to 5 year experience or where you have been and all he'll just look at you know what you what you're willing to give and he uh, he's been able to encourage youngsters to spread out not just in the country outside the country to other businesses right. and that is how like uh, uh, mr yeah. in mumbai he used to sit in the same building that where i used to work with trilegal so they were just one oh, about great i knew somebody there yeah <laughs> at aditya huh. who was ea to uh, the, the ceo so he made me actually meet uh, their group like mr gupta and i remember like you know he was an, a very encouraging person very uh, forthcoming person and very jovial also and yes 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 he is absolutely i mean i think he ranks as i mean 
uh, he ranks as the top most um, uh, in house counsel in the country he's ranked one and he is the most uh, you know, like a very knowledgeable very wise very humble person you'll ever come across and the best part uh, he does is he encourages youngsters he believes in youngsters like in his tenure i've seen a uh, very young people you know becoming a uh, chief legal officer of businesses and all so that's the best part and he's highly motivating and that's what any you know like a uh, fresh graduate would need motivation right i mean you know, to be to be honest enough to be honest enough when you're in school if you like if you are uh, if you've already uh, found out what you really love to do out of all those 50 to 100 laws it's great enough but but if if there is you know a thing in your head that you're not sure what you're looking for try out everything try out everything and you know then, then you'll come to one place in your two to three years or whatever give it give yourself uh, ample time and you'll find that one moment one subject or you know two things which you love a lot and uh, after that uh, after you get your own general uh, experience of being a generalist you get into specialization right so that is a process it might be slow for you but then it's it's very enriching so just wait for that and try out everything initially now uh, yes so uh, um, so you know mr ashok gupta like he uh, he planned to send me out to this uh, trading business of us in dubai now uh, we needed a legal counsel here so uh, yes that is how uh, you know I, i'm into this now and i, I was surprised i was surprised to uh, find you know there are like hundreds of matters and uh, 80% is international arbitration we have like we generally deal with uh, siac with hong kong arbitration with uh, london arbitration uh, lcia so different institutions and initially like uh, i had to like i mean right now i'm doing a lot of groundwork because you know like there's lot to be synchronized there's lot to be crystallized now uh, i'm sure like uh, i'll i'll come to this i'll come to this um in international arbitration uh, like for for law students and for fresh lawyers the first point is drafting a very good contract now in your contract you must always focus on as i said the dispute resolution clause the, the governing law clause because i've seen i've seen um, arbitrations going on in singapore in hong kong wherein you know like many issues crop up because they do not have a proper clause on x y z so make sure that your clauses are very well defined and being a legal uh, being a like law firm lawyer in house counsel being a lawyer essentially your your role is to you know preventive precautionary you do not want your client to get into something tomorrow because there are lots of expenses is a lot of you know dragging along and nothing is easy once uh, once a breach is done once a contract is breached i mean the loss you want to recover it's 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 a painful task and you're not sure wh whether you're getting it how much you're getting it when you're getting it the timelines everything changes and it's it's a lot of responsibility on you as a lawyer to assure that fine something went wrong i'll do it right so it comes up with a lot of responsibility that ways and um yes so uh, uh okay so i i need to tell you that uh get your contract drafting basics correct secondly uh uh okay ramesh so, can you like just guide me what like else should i speak on like yeah 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 sure so you know uh, so we got your background and how you joined aditya bill after that uh so and then aditya bill you you ended up in dubai so can you tell me how like we like probably people know how is life as an in house counsel when you are working in india but how did things change since you shifted to dubai okay so uh yeah i i'll be pretty honest uh um uh, like i think there is a general perception that uh, there is 
freelance work in house for a lawyer but let me tell you yeah. like wherever you are if 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 you are practicing lawyer or you are an in house counsel or a law firm lawyer it all depends on you you know like work might be less might be more but you can always create it so if you are a lawyer and you 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 always want to be engaged with a lot of things create your own work just okay. don't listen to the general perceptions that are created because people have their own perceptions and you will never get to the facts if you you know like build your own opinions based on hearsay and you know perceptions like from here and there so yes uh coming to an in house uh, lawyer's role uh in india i mean i have worked with other tabella only in and corporate legal in one of the mining divisions uh, units as well so for me the work has been intense from the very beginning because uh, when i joined the mining uh, segment of other tabella there was a lot of lit- i mean litigation matter going on although we you know the perception is that in house counsel engage uh, external lawyers or law firms and hence they don't have to do anything but that's not true at all because being in in house counsel when you when you you know get to this place you know that you know your facts very well no one will know your facts like you know not even an external counsel so your your role is your mangas in terms of how you communicate you know uh, your facts to the external counsel and how you shape it up to build your own matter and to you know run it through successfully right secondly uh, as in house counsel there is uh, there is a difference i mean i mean i, I feel uh, you know like a sense of uh, there is responsibility as a lawyer but you know like i feel okay fine i I'm, i should make sure that my company wins this matter i, I you know there is a sense you know that loyalty mm-hmm. feeling mm-hmm. it's there some somewhere it comes along uh i'm not sure you know like how other people have experienced it but yes it, it is there so uh, the way you drive the work is certainly different like i was i was constantly on this mining litigation in supreme court we had a very top law firm with us but yes we were reading through the drafts we were drafting you know applications by our own because we believe other the bill at least you know like we believe in drafting our own stuff getting it produced by the lawyer and we were always you know at the, like very much on alert and you know like everything dates uh, facts everything was like at the tip of our tongue so right. there there was intense and enga- engaging and it all depends on you at the end of the day yeah yeah so just asking you know from an india experience how did it change once you moved to uh, dubai like it must be different right it cannot be quite the same so what's the is or or is it pretty much the same would you say uh okay my experience okay my experience is uh, slightly um, i i should tell you that uh, currently i am the only legal uh, person in uh, this trading business we are looking to expand our trade uh, our uh, legal cell so for me the work has been i at least like 20 times more and i'm like you know like uh, working like for more than 13 to 15 hours so that's what it is it, it has come up to and uh there is the, there is more intensity there is more response uh because we are constantly dealing with international lawyers and uh you know we have to keep a tab on okay fine we were claiming x amount but we have spent y x plus y amount you know where it is going so i have to keep a tab on that also there's a lot of negotiation a lot of um, a lot of strategy making strategy making was there in india as well but here like you have to like change your strategy like you know in a blink you have to like understand okay fine i have filed it in a Singa- singapore and i've gone for siac now my execution my contract says uh, enforcement in indonesia now okay where do i go to indonesia how is it uh, you know as far as execution is execution friendly do i get my money do i not get my money okay fine uh, the party is not responding to arbitration what do i do do i you know like party is just absconding can i simultaneously go and file a matter in uh, people's republic uh, 
core of Ch Ch China? Can I do that? Will it uh, be sustainable? Will it not be maintainable? I mean, you know, there's so many things going on. It's humongous. And the angles, I mean, because we are dealing with different jurisdictions, um, it's it's uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of thinking. It's a lot of uh, action as well. Right. I don't know how else I can put it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, am I there? Like, am I audible? Um, I lost you for a moment. I think. Okay, you're back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. So, uh, you know, what's your experience with respect to the system in Dubai? Like, uh, do you have to do some work in Dubai, or are you only doing international work? Uh, uh no, I'm based out of Dubai. So, okay. Um, because we are generally dealing with you know parties from China, Indonesia, or. Uh, Africa, London. So uh, essentially, the work is out of Dubai, to be honest. But yes, uh, in Dubai, we we generally have very, like very few matters we have in Dubai courts. We have you know to face uh, Dubai. I mean UAE councils. So let me tell you a bit about Dubai. I mean UAE. Uh, in UAE, uh, only uh, UAE uh, citizens are allowed to practice in the courts. You can practice, I mean, do the rest of the work as a lawyer, but you cannot go into the court and practice. So that's one. Secondly, but as, I mean, as an in-house counsel or law firm counsel here, the work is again tremendous. You, you, uh, you get great work internationally. Um, thirdly, uh, if at all, you know, if you're interested to apply to any kind of Dubai legal jobs, you can definitely do that. It's great to be here. Uh, the only plus point you will have is if you get to learn Arabic. It's slightly difficult, but it's an amazing language. And if you do that, you are in. I mean, you're in to many, many legal jobs, amazing legal jobs. You have Emirates. You have, I mean, you have Google, you have Facebook. Everybody's here. And to be frank enough, Dubai as a city is lovely. Uh, people around just very helping. It's 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 a wonderful ambience. The only problem is the heat. The heat you face for six months is bad, but the rest of the things in Dubai is is tremendous. Tremendous opportunities. And you know, legal is growing here. Legal is growing. So this is a time you can come here and you can see what you can like. See, uh, see, for example, there's a lot of maritime work in Dubai. A lot of maritime work. Like, I'm usually involved in maritime work. It's, again, a very technical subject. I have to be constantly in touch with, uh, you know, the captain, people who have been the captain and, you know, like, engineers. But it's, it's, it's amazing. And the opportunities are huge. For example, even in India, I believe there are only, like, a couple of, like, three to five great lawyers into maritime so that's one very good option and if you want to like do a bit of maritime work in india and you can easily apply in dubai and get a good good place uh secondly uh, there's a lot of construction you know dubai is dubai is about being strongest and tallest so a lot of construction uh, you know law and a lot of man is there so you can uh, learn the construction law stuff and Take some courses. There are online courses as well. Please Google. There are Dubai construction uh, law courses. There are maritime law courses, uh, arbitration courses as well. So you can do all that. If you want to be in Dubai, just do a bit of Dubai and come here. And and the you know, the forum is all yours. Right. That's really awesome. And uh, how do people actually, uh, if you are saying like, how can people actually apply for jobs in Dubai? Like, you know, they just have to go to the... Okay site and apply or something okay so uh, for me it was again unexpected because i was sent here by mr ashok gupta but okay now i've realized how people apply here just there is uh, there is you know linkedin right i mean there's nothing more powerful than linkedin right now so uh, on your linkedin profile i think the only thing you have to do is to change your location as dubai or uae you have an option somewhere so do that and you get uh, you get uh, hundreds of 
you know opportunities just keep applying keep applying keep applying and if at all uh, you know the only problem is like uh, these interviewers they prefer if you are in dubai while they call you for an interview so next time if you are planning to come to dubai it is you know like 3 and a half hours from mumbai it's 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 just like you know another city uh, you know you can just say that in india so whenever you are planning a trip plan for you can take a 15 uh, day visa or a one month visa that's that's famous better get a one month visa for your next vacation come here roam around you know have a great time at the same time you know like come and just view you can so for that you should start applying now and you know plan your vacation that way right and so, secondly uh, uh, i'll uh, yeah sorry can you yeah sorry i cut you sorry. off please can like yeah there is there is an app uh, called uh, dubizel d u b i z z l e so uh, guys please download that you get a lot of vacancies over there for uh, dubai jobs so keep trying that that's the only way constantly trying okay so just by applying one could get and the best way to actually land up in dubai and look for jobs that's a that's a great suggestion i think flight, yeah for interviews yeah just be around there are a lot of cheap hostels to stay in so it's 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 no big deal absolutely yeah. absolutely no big deal i mean if you can just plan your vacation somewhere in sri lanka uh, uh, pattaya i mean better come here yeah i'm like you know not from a vacation point of view but i i think the you know the cost of traveling to dubai is very less like from mumbai i very got one way like 7000 that's good. absolutely from and it's the cheapest from jaipur i heard it's 12000 to and fro if you book it in advance 12000 to and fro wow. and visa yeah and visa i'm not sure but visa for a month is like 300 or 4 300 dirhams should be like 5 to 6000 so pretty pocket friendly i mean if you yeah it is right and people can go on a tourist visa really they don't have to worry about yeah i mean yeah they have to come on a tourist visa because here uh, so the really, employers once you enroll i mean once you are jo- be joining some company or whatever like your employer will get your residence visa done so when you come here you come on a tourist visa right so uh, you know what's the uh, experience of living in dubai like you said and uh, said that's a very friendly city but if you can tell a little more like compared to you have lived in delhi and bhubaneswar like compared to that what are the challenges of yeah uh, <clears throat> so i have lived in delhi and bhubneshwar in mumbai now i am in dubai so uh, okay i'll tell you uh, okay let me tell you the only minus the only minus is accommodation like in mumbai here it's very expensive but you should not bother about that because uh, when you choose a choose a job you know you know like uh, they'll tell you if they 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 are going to get you accommodation or they'll tell you your package so accordingly you decide because here i think per month a basic studio apartment or many details but i think it's important so uh 1000 dirhams or something so um 6000 dirhams would be what like a eight like you know a lakh a lakh is spent monthly on accommodation so accordingly you know, if you're coming for a job what is the package you're looking for if they tell you okay we are going to get you uh 12000 total including accommodation so you should know instantly that that 5 to 6000 will go away in um, in uh, ac- accommodation and so the rest 6000 is it okay for me or not so uh, that's how you have to quickly think and uh, but for me i mean if you ask me honestly as a fresher if you're coming and if you're offered a job of say uh 15000 12 to 15000 including accommodation never say a no because you should start somewhere and that's a good amount of money if you, you know you're coming for your and your your standards are changed instantly so uh keep that in mind and uh, secondly um dubai yeah this is accommodation secondly dubai as a place is wonderful i mean 
uh, as i told you you know you you the, it's it's a cosmopolitan you have people coming from various places people are extremely helping like i mean i can tell you the first day in my metro i needed help i had no phone or anything you know like there was a filipino woman who helped me to travel till the end and you know she got me down at my office palestinian people everywhere like i mean i've been very much touched like in mumbai i felt this great people everywhere and in dubai the same thing so that's a plus point for me and thirdly um yeah like if you if you get a kitchen and you cook for yourself you can save a lot so dubai is actually if you you know if you're getting an accommodation you're getting kitchen it's less expensive than being in mumbai so that's fantastic that's so uh, how, yeah. how is uh, the experience of you know like uh, doing international arbitration like when you are handling these cases what are the usual uh, challenges that come up and what are the skills that you really need to deal with yes so um uh, yeah am i audible yeah 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 go on yeah great right. so okay now uh you should remember is when you are advising your client to go for an arbitration to invoke that arbitration clause make sure that the other party has actually breached the contract be very sure that the breach of contract has to be crystal clear for example if you you know you're not very sure maybe there is a contributory uh, breach from your side as well and you're going to ciac or you're going to hong kong arbitration you might end up paying uh, paying up the legal cost for the other party as well so don't don't put your client into that position always make sure that there is a breach from the other side and you can prove it with documents okay so one uh, one very essential thing we must see that in you no know, in contract just check the the liability clause whenever you're dealing with any international party what is the loss that you're claiming in case the other person is breaching the contract uh is it direct i mean are you covering the direct losses are you covering the indirect losses are you covering loss for profit so today if i'm only covering uh direct losses in my contract and tomorrow before siac i'm going and telling them that uh, okay i lost you know i had some losses with respect to profit because a person did not lift my cargo and i had to sell my cargo to z you know at a lower rate cheaper rate so give me back my loss of profits siac will not listen to that and never even try to raise that kind of uh, uh, if you do not have it in a contract so essentially what we are seeing is these institutions they are very much you know into your contract they'll see what you have agreed upon what you have not agreed upon what you have you know given yourself to on the plate so that's very important that's where contracting comes you know as handy uh secondly um so in india secondly you when you are drafting uh, just 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 drawing a parallel here in india you can go to the court with even like very remotely relevant issues and you can actually get a hearing get a you know injunction issued or at least a notice issued on like even if you don't have it in the contract you go and allege some sort of you know like misconduct or something it correct it. but this this is something <laughs> don't get to do when you are doing international arbitration is, is that what you think yes yes absolutely so here like you have to be very precise you have to be very clear you have to have your own documents the documents have to be authentic like arbitrators they also go by you know they notice your conduct like okay i mean this was a forged document given to us even though you have not breached the contract and the other party party has breached the contract they will keep that as a note that no you actually gave us some small forged document you know so all these things you cannot cannot bluff before an arbitrator and everything every conduct is taken very seriously um so uh yes and when you're claiming anything any kind of loss even if it's small thing just have your your own uh, proof for that so that that has to be very uh, very uh, you know convincingly uh, provided to the arbitrator okay now coming to the second issue 
The second issue is whenever you are advising your client that okay, let's go for arbitration, make sure that you are doing your due diligence about the other company, as in whether the company has assets enough to get you back your money or not. Unfortunately, as an in-house counsel, what I see is arbitration has been pushed into, and we get an award. You know, after like nine, ten months, we are getting an award of millions of USD. And the moment we try to, you know, go for enforcement in some other jurisdiction, we see the pers- the the company has no assets. So where do we go? So all your labor, all your expenses, they're just gone. I mean, you can't like no one can give you that back. Yeah. So make sure before you push your cl- client to go for arbitration. Not just that the other party has breached, the other party has you know assets enough to get you back your money. Okay. Thirdly, the most important point is make sure you're choosing the right jurisdiction for enforcement. Suppose, uh, suppose like I'm choosing uh, okay enforcement in Zambia. You are gone. You're gone because, I mean, practically speaking, uh, uh. You do not know where your case will go into, whether you'll get that money or not, because rules are not very crystal, you know, crystally defined over there. Anything can happen. That's what we are facing. I mean, you know, the party, if the party is also a Zambian one, it might also use its influence to uh, keep your case dragging. So make sure that, you know, you find out. Currently, I'm actually researching on the most, the top uh, 10 execution friendly uh, jurisdictions that's on so yeah find that out like where you should go for execution and when you're going for execution what will be the expenses what will be the timeline the my uh, claim amount will it you know go on for two to three years so you know take take all that all these thing into account and uh, then advise your client whether you should go for arbitration or not okay and uh, so i was asking you know what kind of uh, like what are the important skills and knowledge uh, you know body that somebody can develop uh, when they are interested in international arbitration so what would you say are the things that you know you have already said earlier also that you should develop your knowledge of contract now you told us some very useful things about what to look out for. But so, uh, hey, I am a let's say I am a young lawyer or a law student in my course, and I'm interested in going into international arbitration. What would you say are the you know what what are the few things I can do now to get into international arbitration eventually? Maybe in Dubai or correct. Yeah. So uh, apart from contract drafting, what you need to see is uh, keep checking the sites for SIAC, Singapore International Arbitration, uh, for LCIA, London Arbitration, for Hong Kong Arbitration. And we also have a, a you know, uh, budding uh, MCIA, I think Mumbai, uh, Mumbai Arbitration. So check that. So you need to be in, you know, updated with all these sites. So they are very informative and they usually hold sessions, uh, conferences all around the world. I think uh, there is a, there is a conference coming up in October in Mumbai, October 8th, if I'm not wrong. Just se- check the uh, CF uh, site for that. Update about these sites. Keep uh, visiting conferences, keep meeting people, keep meeting, you know, like, Okay, like I've been to uh, quite a few conferences here and there, and the discussions, the kind of uh, you know um, knowledge that you derive out of that, the practical issues that you will you know hear yourself uh, getting discussed. So that's amazing. I mean, I mean, make sure that you attend at least one conference every month, or if not every month, then you know once in two months, anywhere. So that by that, what you will find is you'll find the arbitration family over there. Like, you know, and, and just get the numbers, get the email IDs, be in touch. And you will always be updated with every, uh, you know, X, Y, Z 
of arbitration happening and that way is also you will create a very good network and they're really kind people if you show your interest you know in arbitration they might refer you at some place definitely like the the family is very 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 supportive so that is there and uh, thirdly um, what you can do is check icc website also they have online courses there are many courses which you can apply for and uh, there are many courses which are free as well so go for that if you think arbitration is your thing uh, you know you want to try something different than litigation go for that and uh, if you are a person who would love to travel around and work then this is your profession just go for that okay that's i that think very useful advice uh, we have a question i'm sorry uh, we have got a few questions okay so we yeah. will take some of those questions now uh, we have shri dutta okay. das who is asking uh, okay. ma'am i just gra uh, just graduated from a traditional college and i got admission in masters of corporate law so what will okay. you take to get into arbitration so he uh, he got into corporate law in masters and then i i missed it i'm sorry i lost it so after that now she's saying that she wants to work as a uh, like she wants to get into arbitration so what can she do okay okay uh, yeah hi uh, i mean what you should do right now is uh, you have taken a great decision do your masters at the same time parallelly as i told you just check icc website check these websites which i mentioned ciac siac also please i mean i would advise have a small booklet like this for singapore international arbitration center you have all these rules over there just go through these rules once i mean okay these rules might look dry but but you know there are some important things which you will come across you check you know the powers of the tribunal how to draft an arbitration clause uh, so you'll find they have a model arbitration clause please 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 follow this arbitration clause in whichever contract you're drafting so uh, just have a hang of you know how arbitration is read read up these rules a bit please please uh, you know get and roll into any online course have a certificate course and i'm sure these things can build up uh your uh, you know it will show that you are interested in arbitration so maybe like after a year or maybe after 6 months wherever you apply with these little bit of experiences here and there definitely you'll get somewhere great uh we have a question from kunal chandriyani he is asking how can a graduate get an in house job in india are scores more important like college score i think he is asking for and any courses to get a job in foreign countries you can suggest okay so one let's take one by one how can you how can a, in a, like a graduate get an in house job in india so just one thing is that you know in india i think in house jobs are easier to get when you have a little bit of experience you know like you know get by absolute freshers because freshers usually uh, you know there are many apprehensions about hiring a fresher so it's kind of hard to get a in house something job as a fresher sometimes you get a job if you have even 2 to 3 years of law firm experience or uh, you know even litigation experience for 2 to 3 years you get a job in a in house role much faster uh, but if you can share your uh, you know suggestions if people do get jobs as so what is to be done uh, yeah so uh, that's a good question and uh, let me tell you frankly i mean uh, it's good if you have a year or two years experience anywhere even as a practicing lawyer uh, or as a law firm uh, counsel before you jump into in house uh, yes it's a, it's a fact they actually look for a bit of experience said that let me tell you i mean a practicing lawyer i mean if you're starting as a practicing lawyer just for 6 months or a year also i mean that would actually give you a lot of knowledge a lot of practical tips and after that if you're coming to uh, an interview in in house uh, in house uh, place you would be very much valued 
okay just remember that secondly it's not the only thing that you know if you are experienced enough for a year or two they take you in it's also the way that you know like if you are interning over there and if you uh, you know show some dedication if you are willing to work for in house and you have your reasons please go for it i mean people will, will take you they i don't think right now i mean there is any stereotype <laughs> that okay i need a two year old experienced person that okay i need this that there's nothing like that so if you're getting an internship that would be a great way to break into an in house directly but having said that i'm I, i'm telling you out of experience the value practicing law is a lot so if you can get an experience with some senior lawyer or any 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 good lawyer out there before you jump into in house that would be terrific great uh his other question was how important is scores like in your does your college score matter here at all um personally i believe and what i've seen is uh, i don't think uh, college scores do matter uh because at the end of the day what uh, you know uh, a senior lawyer or or an in house general counsel would look is is my work getting done that's it that's it at the end of the day so so if you are hard working if you are ready to you know show some creativity at work if you are ready to you know if you're committed to your work that's it that's it that's it there's no score there's nothing i mean they will see at the end of the day what quality of work you are giving them right and also even during the interview and whatever people don't look only at your cv correct from the perspective they see what you have done what you bring on the table what are your skills so there are many opportunities exactly exactly demonstrate your yeah like i mean uh, even like now in interview you must be seeing like they ask you like you know what work did you do in internship okay like they would uh, love to get through that and uh, even i know that you know there is a confirmation process in aditya bill after a year these freshers uh, get uh to face this interview they just asked on what kind of work they were doing and were they doing it thoroughly what have they learned from that experience so it's it's more like practical and somewhere college scores are given a back seat but having said that if you are still in law school please do your law correct i mean i mean that's the best place to learn that's the best place to you know get as much knowledge as you can as much as many articles you can write i mean just get engaged intellectually as much as you can that will always be a brownie point right so yeah so all right so the other question uh, kunal also asked is uh, any courses to get a job in foreign countries you can suggest uh i didn't get it ramanuj can you please repeat yeah is asking if there are any courses one can do to get a job in a foreign country oh courses okay i can only tell you about arbitration courses so uh, as i told you like check icc website international Ch chamber of commerce website you have online courses on arbitration uh, you have online courses on arbitration in uh, on in dubai as well just like a randomly type and you will get a host of uh, uh, courses and also if you want i can email you some free courses i have a pdf i think i can email it to ramanuj or like and that can be shared so you sure. can try that hmm. um yes so okay so we have another question from kinjal kini rai choudhury who is asking I have graduated last year from a traditional law college. How should I make it into a law firm? As most of the law firms prefer people from top law colleges. Could you please guide? Okay. So again, like if you're looking for a law firm, I would, uh, I would really uh, request you not to limit yourself to any top uh, five law firms or anything like that. please i mean uh, you know expand your uh, i mean vision there are there are like i'm sure there are like 20 to 30 great law firms in india 
please start from somewhere and that should there are hundreds of good law firms in india yeah okay <laughs> yeah so that's it i mean there are numerous i mean don't uh, you know if you're thinking that okay you know i'm i'm stuck with these five i'm stuck with these 10 then that becomes difficult but i'm sure there's a lot of work happening there's a lot of business growing so i mean there's a lot of work and you can get anywhere you want just keep trying everywhere so keep your plate very broad big and broad that's what if you're asking for more asking at many places you will get what you want don't limit yourself that's it hello am i there ramanish you are there you are there yeah yeah so one yeah, okay. question uh, i have is that as as an in house counsel how do you decide to hire a lawyer for your uh, company like when maybe sometimes you have to choose the you know the counsel who's going to argue for your uh, case, right so how do you make those choices and how like what is involved in the decision making uh i think for an in house lawyer what is um you know always uh, seen as okay facts like how well you take your facts so that is very critical when you come to in house because uh because you know like in house would mean that you are dealing with some kind of business so you also need to have a little bit of business sense like what is important for a business in house counsel uh, if i'm, I'm uh, sorry i think i couldn't explain sorry? Uh, i think i could not explain okay. my question very well what i'm saying is that how do you select you are an in house counsel so sometimes you have to appoint outside counsels to argue cases or mm. argue arbitration okay okay external counsels yes yes uh, for you know looking when we look for external counsels like law firms or practicing lawyers uh the only thing we are concerned is getting relief so that's it we need a relief centric lawyer we do not you know we actually knowledge uh, wisdom everything is fine reputation is great but all we need is relief who can get us faster relief who can get us relief uh, you know at competitive rates uh who can communicate our our position very clearly and convincingly to the court that's it so the on, only thing i'm always asked when you know whenever there is a case and you know management is keenly looking forward to that that okay did we get the relief or not that's the only question they ask and that's how i have to decide where i have to go got it So, uh, okay, so yeah. you know, we are almost towards the end of our session. There are just five minutes left. So, just wanted to know, okay. you know, before we go, is that, you know, what's your, uh, so like, your if there are some young lawyers or law students, you have shared a lot of advice to them. But you know, if somebody wants to shift into arbitration from, uh, you know, or or into an in-house role from a law firm, what would be your advice to them? and also like uh, yeah yeah let, let's start with that so if somebody is shifting yeah, so you're asking me yeah if somebody is planning to shift into in house role yeah. from a from a either a litigation role or from a law firm role then what Correct. You know, what is okay my only advice would be build your commercial sense it takes time to understand business now once you are planning to become an in house counsel from being a law firm or you know practicing counsel you need to know that business is the most important thing you need to understand like suppose like you know i'm i'm into mining like uh, like you're getting into a, a mining unit you need to understand the a b c d of mining how it is you need to go to the site to actually see how it happens then only you will understand you know what the business expects from you suppose i say that okay like you know like uh, the uh, like supreme court uh, uh, announces that you do not have forest clearance your mining is illegal but how do i convince a court that you know like i did apply for forest clearance but i did not get because of xyz reasons so you need to know that you know like when somebody does not have a forest clearance 
what actually goes in on a site so you need to have you need to build your practical commercial business sense very very uh, you know you have to make it very very strong to uh, to to you know you have to play the part time of being a lawyer and as well as a business person so that is what any in house uh, senior management would also expect from you so be prepared for that get some industry knowledge keep uh, keep update keep you know keep yourself updated on uh, industry happenings also or wherever you're planning to what whatever kind of industry you want to join if you're supposing uh, you want to join telecom just just see what's happening uh, you know what is jio doing what is why is there an issue in the high court why is it jio versus uh, idea about a phone battle what's happening so keep yourself uh, abreast with all that great okay i think that was great advice today and thank you so much for enlightening about us so many different things and uh, i am sure you know students and young lawyers will find it extremely useful so uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, one more message for everybody who attended is that please do subscribe to the channel so that uh, you know we can keep sharing great videos with you and do come back tomorrow again next to 9 Uh, we'll be having another exciting uh, guest, just like Shatrupa. Thank you so much, Shatrupa, for making time for an hour with Law School. Thank you, Raman. Thank yes. you so much. It was a wonderful experience for me. I, yeah, I hope it was useful. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Bye, everybody. Take care. Good night. Bye. Good night.